Jared pulling fro nose photo.com and it's time for an Adorama Picks rapid fire critique that's never rapid and it's rarely on fire because I don't smoke. So I don't have any lighters or or matches, do I? Maybe when I like candles. I rarely like candles too because I don't really like fire. But anyway, so we have photos here from Nicole Hannah. I had to get really close to the screen. It's I'm blind. But anyway, so Nicole is shooting with a Nikon D90, and it looked like a lot of these pictures were taken with, say, a 90 millimeter macro. So here's the first shot. It's a butterfly. Right off the bat, I would love to see the exposure pulled back slightly, contrast boomified, and the black levels added just a little bit, and that will make this image pop even more. Um, I'm not sure if it's focused on the, the head or where these tentacles are, or if it's right here on the flappers the wings uh i'm not really sure the best place to focus with animals i mean i still want to focus in on the eyes even though this may have 14 different eyes i still think you want to hit on the eyes um so yeah i would pump up the contrast a little more uh, bring that out and let's i wanted to look at something in click i was saying that this was yeah okay yeah this was taken at one 125th of a second at 200 ISO. What I want to say to everybody out there is don't be afraid to bump your ISO up higher to get a faster shutter speed, which will counteract some hand movement and give you sharper images. Don't be afraid to go to 400. Your cameras can handle, all the cameras can handle 400. I think all the cameras won't have a problem even at 800, 1000, some, some of them even 1600 these days. So I wouldn't be afraid to bump that to give you um, a better shutter speed. Keep in mind, if you went to 400, oh, exposure bias, two thirds. I don't know why that's on. Uh, I'm not a big fan of that personally. I think a lot of people forget that they turn that on and shoot every single picture and it's going to underexpose it slightly. Um, yeah, I'd be very careful with that now that I see that. But what I'm saying, if you went to 400 ISO, what would happen to your shutter speed? It would double because you went up a stop. So you'd go from 1 one twenty fifth to 1 two fiftieth of a second, which is giving you a better shutter speed. You know, it's going to give you less hand movement. And, and that's where I like to shoot personally. But yeah, pump up this contrast. Let's see that go boom and pop it. And look at that. The dog pumped up the contrast, the saturation and everything. This is solid. Still taken with the uh, 90 millimeter macro, which I'm assuming is a Tamron lens, but look at the color and clarity and sharpness of this image. This is what I'm looking for. This is great. Um, composition's a little different than normal. I mean, it's not a person, so cutting off the paws I don't think is a major, major deal here. Uh, I just like the dog. Really, really nice shot. Solid, colorful, clarity, nice clarity boomified very very well this is what I would like to see with the first one and I think I'd like to see this boomified even more so this is a cool macro shot of the flowers and I like that it's done on the lower third of the frame uh, leaving the top open for whatever reason you know nice negative space it's nice and blown out uh, a little brighter a little more contrast a little more boomification and I think this image would have it it's close but at this point I think um, let's see if the exposure bias is still on in this photo it's possible yeah it's still still there i i what else is here one four hundredth of a second yeah f five six i'm not a big fan of that exposure bias i i, I personally am not i rather control my 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 manual settings and take care of that myself instead of going in and pressing the plus one or plus 1.3 you know a third all that i rather just dial down the exposure because I already know in my head that I want to cut back a third of a stop. Why do I need to, you know, let the camera do it when I can just sit there and dial it down a third of a stop on my own? So start thinking about that. Uh, okay, cool shot of a, an angel statue. So I can obviously see what's going on here. You want to give it that glowy feel with the, with the flare in the background. Not bad at all. Nice, interesting composition. Uh, the color, it's its a very stony looking color, but that's what this subject is of. And I like the fact that you tried to get this lens flare in here and did a good job, ver uh, did a very good job doing it. So nice job there trying something different. Um, what is this, wood? Stumped original. All right, so with this, I have trouble figuring out what it is. It's not really in context. It's hard to tell that it is, um, you know, I can see that it's wood, but it's hard to really feel that it fell down I mean I would like to see the stump where it fell from or maybe some other things that would make it 
more recognizable right off the bat. Uh, I would consider, again, pumping up the contrast to make this uh, the blacks and whites pop even more. But yeah, in terms of... Um, I need to shave. My nose is itching from this beard mustache thing um yeah i would i would look to show a wider um, a wider sense of this image so i get a feel put into context that it is a stump a tree something like that uh more flowers okay nice red tulip um i like the negative space again let's see what this was shot at this time do 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 f11 with this 90 millimeter one two fiftieth of wow it must have been bright still doing this um plus two-thirds i mean instead of doing plus two-thirds you can just bump your shutter speed higher uh two-thirds of a stop and be happy with it um i would let's see I'm, it's hard to tell clarity with this sometimes on Flickr, but you know i th the flower doesn't seem to have that much interest it's a cool shot the color's nice it just seems that the tulip isn't as interesting as I've seen some other types of flowers. Maybe if it was shot with the, you know, into the tulip and you have the pistol and stamen sticking out and you get that nice coloring inside, that would be cool. So try a few different angles with that. Ooh, birdie, seagull wings back black and white. Uh, I don't think this is a black and white. I think this is more of a split tone using a bluish gray type um, edit, but that's really nice. I like the rings of the water going out from the uh, seagull flapping. It's a nice capture. Uh, nice and sharp, nice nice clarity, really nice. I like this one. Let's go forward. Okay. I would say that this is not a shot for black and white. This is definitely a lily pad is a shot for color. Pump up that contrast and that saturation and that vibrance, and you're going to get the nice green if as long as it was green. But, yeah, this is meant to be a color shot in my mind. I don't think the lily pad really, really is done justice in black and white. Um, if you could get a frog on a lily pad... There's a whole nother angle, but obviously that's not the easiest thing to do. I'm just checking to make sure this isn't a frog. It's not a frog. So, yeah, I would definitely go color with this one. Um, all right, so we have an archer or somebody with a bow and arrow. Really cool. Focused right here on the tip of the arrow. Obviously, you got to be very careful when you're going out and uh, shooting somebody like this that you don't get hit with this if they accidentally slip, something breaks, obviously. Um nice black and white nice contrast nice idea to blow them out of focus uh you know what would be even cooler or another cool angle to try in the future is you did one all the way at say 2.8 or blown out with the background would love to see one at f22 to see everything in focus to see what would happen just a cool you know play on that totally out of focus totally in focus would be cool to see and this is the last image another butterfly same thing here more contrast um, the greens would pop, the butterfly would pop, but all in all, it's a, it's a great shot again. The background's blown out very well. I would maybe either come in a little tighter or move the composition, shift the butterfly over to the left-hand side of the frame so that the, um, so that it's not in the middle so much. Just, I feel it would add more interest over to the left, but yeah, pump up that contrast, make it work like that and go from there. So Hannah, uh, sorry, Nicole, Hannah, nice job this week with the 10 images. You're definitely on a tear here. I see that you like to work with this macro often. Uh, when it comes to editing, try pumping up that contrast. Look into your camera settings and see why, or, or explain to me, leave a comment under this video why you decided to do the exposure compensation opposed to, say, switching your... Uh, into manual and doing it manually yourself. I guess some people do it in aperture priority, but if you already know that you need to compensate, you might as well just start to get into the habit of compensating yourself so that you either, one, don't accidentally leave that on for images that you would want to shoot without it, um, but then you start realizing that when the light changes, you just sit there and bump the shutter speed down or you change your aperture and you go from there. So really nice job. And I hope that these comments go over well. Um, I like to give more detail, and I talked about this in the last video where it was a semi-rant where I'm like, people are leaving comments like, great capture, nice job, nice color. Uh, you know, corrective criticism is, is what it's all about. Give positive feedback with an angle of how you could do it differently or how you could do it better. Even if you think it's the greatest image in the world, explain that. So when you're commenting on people's works and giving them feedback and critiquing people's work, give them something more let's let's everybody try to give people more when you're leaving comments whether it's in the fro forum or on Flickr. just give more instead of just killer shot
Great angle. Loved it. Go into detail. What do you love about it? Do you love the contrast? Do you love the color? Do you love the clarity? Do you love the angle that they captured? So look into doing that more and more so that we can start getting away from the, the, the social comments of just, I like it, or just the two word responses, great capture. Let's try to take it into more, you know, where we're helping people more with, with better comments uh, that basically point out what you like, but why you like it. So let's think about that. So thank you very much for watching this Adorama Picks Rapid Fire Critique. If you'd like to send in your 10 best images, either 10 random ones or 10 in a photo story, you can do so to froknosephoto at gmail.com using the subject line Adorama Picks Rapid Fire Critique. We will see you next time. Jared Poland, froknosephoto.com. See ya. We'll